Uh, listen, it is my pleasure. Let's go on the three-way again, Mike Smith. Here's a blast from your past. You haven't talked to this brother in a long time. His name is oh, snap. Alice Hobbs the third. <laughs> EA3. There he is. There he is. What's up, man? Uh, former, former Philadelphia Eagle, former New England Patriot. Uh, yes. How you doing, man? Welcome to the show. Man, Mike, what's going on, man? I appreciate you having me on. Mike Smith, what up, baby? Good to see you, man. Long time. Yeah, bro. Long time, man. When uh when Mike reached out. And he said your name. I was like, "Yo, my man, I ain't seen him in a minute." <laughs> and so, yeah, you. it's it's good to it's good to reconnect, man, with good people. Re- Absolutely, really good. Hey, no doubt. Hey, man, how's your what's your sense of uh of football in 2020 between the style of play and COVID and a lot of interesting <laughs> storylines? That's like, how, how are you? Uh, how are you perceiving football these days? You know what? Um, People ask me that all the time, mainly because of um, just the experience overall. But I'm actually glad I'm not in this era uh, because there's so many um, distractions outside of sports um, that you have to deal with while trying to do your job. And I think it's unfortunate, but the hand that we're dealt, you know, no, uh, no tears for anyone here. But to be a collegiate athlete at this kind of moment and pretty much your dreams aspirations everything that you work for is literally in someone else's control at this point where we've always been led to believe that if you put in the work you'll get the results um you know people are just shutting sports down and so for it to be to this point um, i'm very surprised and shocked the only uh organization that i thought that was actually going to be able to to surpass any of this COVID was the nfl because they have the the financial and monetary backing to do so Anything beyond that or anything below that collegiate uh, high school, especially Pop Warner, I just didn't imagine to to seeing it. But it just seems as everybody's just pushing through this wave regardless. Hey, man, I know you're doing um, a lot of motivational speaking uh, these days, man. I love to know just what your message is, um, you know, to your listeners. Uh, It's very simple. My, My message is never go back. You know, always remember keep that rear view mirror um, aligned so you can always appreciate and value the past. But there's a reason why it's called a rear view mirror. You know, a lot of people that I deal with, Mike, um, whether it's billion dollar corporations, uh, individual CEOs, um, successful athletes, high school athletes, whatever it is, right? I'm always dealing with um, people that have acquired some sort of a success or they've, they've tasted it, but they don't know how to get through that clear ceiling or excuse me, that glass ceiling. And so Mm -hmm. I just try to fall back on my experiences and what I go through hell even now um, because I have my setbacks and everything. And I try to make people understand that it has to be consistent, whatever you're doing. And if you look at consistency, that's just a word, right? But if you apply consistency to either good or bad, you're going to get some sort of results. And so if you can change those bad habits that are consistent in your life, day after day you'll be able to be consistently good day after day um the last thing i'll say is like when you're talking about weight um because a lot of people come to me about like man you're 10 10 years out the league this and that you still look like you can play even though on the inside i feel like a dog but um it's it's i always ask people like how did you become overweight or how did you get to where you were and they give me this elaborate grand story of it was this or my you know, a loved one died or whatever it is, right? And I always say, no, it literally was one meal at a time. It was literally one choice at a time. So how are you going to lose the weight? One meal at a time, one uh, one denial at a time. And you can apply mm-hmm. that concept and that type of that type of mentality to everything you do. Did nothing, unless it's a traumatic car accident, some sort of um, life-changing occurrence all at once, life never really hits you like that. It's always just one choice, one decision, one uh, ill fate night of just doing something over and over again um, that puts you in the position where you currently are. So in order to get out of that, you're going to have to do it one day at a time. That's real. You know, uh, that, that's a good answer. You know, Ellis, I'm wondering how you feel about um, a lot of the stands that, that players, the athletes are taking right now. Not to say that uh, when you played that athletes were not uh, political, but it was a little more rare than it is now. Uh, how, how, do you, um, how do you view this time that we're in right now, this moment? 
I, I think it's a great thing. I think it should, obviously has to start somewhere. Unfortunately, um, it's kind of a shameful thing, and I, and I and I put myself in the same uh, group where I, I personally feel that the NFL has no cohesion with that with that type of unity. Where if you saw an immense amount of support from the NBA, and I think because of Adam Silver, the way that he embraces uh, the black community, uh, the minorities, the brown culture, whatever you want to call it, and he he actually listens and wants to work with them um, is a testimony to the success that they had in the bubble versus what you see in the NFL because our success is literally derived from alpha and being an individual alpha. And in order to succeed in the NFL, one of the most brutal physical games in the world, regardless of the rules now, still, still one of the most violent games out there, a lot of that mentality curves into the everyday choices in life to where every time you see someone try to peek their head over the the Black Lives Matter line or take a knee or something like that, there's always a lash out or a lash back, right? And unfortunately, um, you know, the owners, whomever it is, the powers that be, um, yeah, you know, we have some sort of support now from the commissioner, but, you know, why did it have to take this long? And then let's keep in mind, he's an employee. He's not the leader. He, he doesn't, yeah. he doesn't, he's not the yes guy. And so, so long as those worlds exist amongst the the disruption amongst us as players, again, going back to that alpha mentality, um, I don't think we're anywhere close to where we need to be because we truly have the power. But because of our unfortunate uh, social, economic and economical stances on some of the lifestyles that we come from, we're not allowed or we're forced to not take those full positions of like, you know what, I don't need the league. The league needs me. Hmm, interesting. Hey, man, uh, we got about a minute to go because you're up against the clock before we're out of time on the show. Uh, definitely sure. got to have you back real soon. But listen, I do have to ask you, let's bring it full circle to how we all we all met. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, we've been talking a lot about we've been talking a lot about the Patriots uh, and whether or not, they're, 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 you know, they got any potential to, to, to make this season interesting. And we know they're not what they were, but two and four, <laughs> three game losing streak. Some, some people think they should blow it up. How do you see the Patriots? Michael guarantees they will not have a winning record this year. How do you see the Patriots season playing out? Man, I definitely don't see happy days and rainbows. You know, um, I think <laughs> okay. I think that that 20 year run was amazing. But the days of getting by with just, you know, subpar talent and just having a few sprinkles here and there without that main key piece, uh, Q Tom Brady. Uh, I just don't see it happening, man, where. It's too difficult. I think what you're seeing right now is what the Patriots were from the very beginning, but there was a godsend of like a group of individuals collectively for a 20 year span. But now to do that consistently, you're actually seeing how hard it is to win uh, with that caliber of talent. And when you don't have that key piece, which they had a chance a few years ago, that's what Bill was trying to explain to them. Like, listen, this is our move. Let's keep Garoppolo in this position. I I just can't see them developing somebody behind now losing quarterbacks. You had the greatest ever. To, to, to fabricate yeah. behind, but now that that's missing, it, it, the window's gone. Cool, man. Hey, good brother, man. You, Ellis, man. So good to see you. So good to yeah. see you. Come on back, uh, man. Glad that you're coming doing back, well, man. Right? I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. This is just, just look, this is just the warm-up act. We'll see you again soon. Man, listen. Yeah, I love, I love that title, too. Brother from another. I'm going to end it. Brother from another mother. So, yeah, let's keep it. Let's All keep right. It going. Hey, thanks for watching Brother From Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.